Hi everyone, Angelina, Sparkling Diva. Uh, I felt inspired again, so there's another video. Uh, yesterday, um, I, in my video, I, I mentioned something that so much happens in our childhood when we are children that we are we get all these rules and regulations put upon us by adults and by society that often makes us change in, and deviate from who we actually really were when we were still pure as a young child. And I was just thinking about that. I haven't got a clue why actually that something triggered me. I'm not certain what. And just remember that in my family, I was always the odd one out. And um, I had a sister, uh, I have a sister, uh, an older sister, three and a half years older, and she has epilepsy. So in that sense, um, yeah, I have a sister, but in a way I don't because she was also a bit, you know, always ill and, and uh, but my, in my family, they, they were just completely different from what I liked, their likes. Uh, when it came to music or whether it, it was um, things that you watch on telly. And I remember um, my parents, for instance, they liked Dutch music and... I'm not even certain if there is a an English um, equivalent of that. <laughs> uh, suffice it to say that I feel it's fucking horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry about my language, okay? I'm just really sorry about that. But um, in German, maybe you could have the Schlager music. I'm not certain if even that is actually <laughs> a good comparison for the Dutch music that I'm, uh, that I mean, just let's say it's absolutely horrible and not my taste at all. Uh, if, if pop music and rock music is on one end, then that type of music is on the complete other end of the of the scale and <laughs> i was always more into pop music the, the more just the popular music that you you heard on the radio and uh but there was also exceptions although that was also at the time quite um popular uh i think it was the the osmonds i'm not entirely certain anymore because i was really quite young at the time the crazy horses and then it it was just insane. It was just insane. That guy going nuts on the keyboards with that, uh, imitating the horses. And, and yeah, I, oh, I got, I love that. I absolutely love that. And if I listen to it now, it's like, bloody hell, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> it really is, you know. And, and still I can appreciate it because as a child, I just loved it. I'd soaked it up and I loved it. And my parents, the rest of my family, they all hated it. None of them liked that kind of thing, you know? They were all more in the, in the more uh, mainstream stuff. And yeah, I, I was always a bit unusual in, in, in that sense. And the same thing when it came to uh, watching telly. Uh, it was also in the 70s. I was also still quite young, maybe five years old. I'm not certain anymore. You had these series of Monty Python, and I doubt whether I understood much of it because, of course, I didn't speak English at the time. Uh, and maybe there were subtitles, but I'm not even certain if I could read because I was still really quite young. But I just loved it, the vibe of it, and the way it started with all these silly cartoons and, and thingies and... It just really appealed to me because it was so unusual. It was so weird. It was weird. And um, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. No one else in my family did. <laughs> I was the only one. And um, I think in some way or other, it always remained that way. I was always, I was always the odd one out. The stupid thing is what happens is that you do uh, then tend to conform. Um, because we all, everyone, it's a human thingy. We all have a craving, a desire, a wish to belong, to fit in. That's a very human thing, right? No one wants... To, that's a primal instinct, actually. Because in, in the olden days, if you didn't fit in, if you didn't belong to something... Well, your chances of survival were very slim, right? You needed to belong to a community and to a group in order to be safe, to be able to survive, to increase your chances of survival. 
that's why we have such a strong drive often to fit in, to belong, and, and often take that too far, right? That, uh, at our own expense, and we lose our own uniqueness. And in a way, I think I did that as well, but still, that odd streak, that weird streak, that it, I still got that. I never lost that. I never really lost that. And um, even, I remember um, not that long ago that... I have been bullied for, I think, seven years on end at school when I was a child. It was absolutely dreadful. It was, it was seriously not pleasant. I would never want to relive that part of my life again. <laughs> uh, but then even after that, the last year in elementary school, I wasn't bullied anymore. But, I, well, my self-confidence was uh, trashed <laughs> completely. But we had this big uh, play, um, um, like a theatre play uh, in that class when we were 12 years old. It was an annual thing the school did. And then you could audition for, uh, well, a part in that play. And, I, well, I auditioned. And uh, I auditioned for the main character, the female main male character of that play. And I wanted that. I really seriously wanted that. And I gave it my all, in, you know, during that auditioning. And they took that quite seriously as well. And everyone was quite surprised by how well I did. I got so many compliments. But I didn't get the role. And I got another one, uh, and one that I just really didn't like, you know. You, I got on stage then maybe for two minutes, and then you had to say two sentences, and that was about it, somewhere in the back. And I felt so um, aggrieved, I think is the right word, because I had wanted that main character role, right? And, and um, I had done a very good job, and I still hadn't gotten it. And I was just really narked about that. So when, uh, when, when we had the gig for family, and you know, like parents and grandparents and friends, etc., I uh, I didn't go. <laughs> I had a bit of a cold, but not really bad. But I was so narked about having to look stupid on stage. I had to wear these ears, huge ears. I was an ear being, right? And all I had to do was do this. No, don't do that. No, don't do that three times. And that was it during the entire play that lasted over an hour. While I had wanted the main character wanted to be the main character well i didn't you know that i felt like no that no 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 that's pushing it that's that's not i just couldn't live with that and i didn't go <laughs> i told my mom now i feel ill i don't feel all that well i'm not so i always had this strength in me that inner strength to just not put up with bullshit that if, if it didn't suit me I, well, I'm also a Taurus, you see. I can be quite stubborn. I just didn't do it. I just flatly refused to do it. And I had completely forgotten about that until uh, a couple of months ago. And I thought, wow. Because I, I was actually thinking the way I remembered my childhood, that I lost my guts, that I lost my strength in, during my childhood. And yes, it affected me tremendously. I'm, I'm still not completely done with that. I don't think it will ever really be over. You know, seven years of bullying on a daily basis that has an impact on a person. Uh, I've done a lot of healing. I've come an awful long way. But there's still, I think there will always be something left of that. And, you know, but that's okay. But I, 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 it was such a revelation, such an eye-opener when I, I suddenly remembered that I had never, ever really completely lost my inner strength, my faith in me. I mean, seven years of bullying and then auditioning for uh, the, the, the main character in a play, you know? So I still have balls. <laughs> I never... I'm, I'm really very resilient and it, it did me an awful lot of good to remember that. It did me so much good. To just know and feel and remember, like, yeah, nothing can really get me down. Not really. No, I always bounce back. Yeah, I will be damaged maybe a bit and I might have scars and it might take a bit of time to recover. But damn, I always bounce back. <laughs> but for some reason or other, I feel drawn to um, helping other people with this stuff as well. 
I've, I've, I've felt that for over a month now that I want to do an inner child course and I will be offering that real soon um, as a matter of fact I have already sort of decided to start that directly after Halloween after sewing because sewing is the Celtic New Year and then they always traditionally um, dealt with the last year look back at the last year and let go of things that didn't serve them anymore that were old and so they could make a fresh start into the new year so the Celtic New Year is actually sewing Halloween what what Americans and Irish and whatever call Halloween that so I thought well why not uh, start then I actually think that's a brilliant moment to make a start it's not going to be a week course it's not going to be five days uh, I want to do a longer one so that you can get more results out of it because it, it, it's going to be quite deep as usual but inner child work takes a little bit more time as well so it's going to be uh, at least a month I'm thinking about a month and uh, incorporating first starting with inner child work and um, go digging into what's you know into you, you you digging into you it's soul searching and to get all these things up and heal them work on them and and after that i want to end with uh self-love so it's it's digging deep uh dealing with all that stuff and then finishing it off with building up self-love um yeah and, and it's going to be uh a month it's going to be a month the date i'm not certain about just yet i will have to check the calendar i don't even know if halloween is uh, during the week or in the weekend i haven't a clue i haven't checked that at all but this is something that i felt in my own system for like i said for over a month and i only do courses when they resonate with me if, if, if i'm not if i don't feel connected to that subject i can't do the course it just doesn't work really doesn't work it has to resonate with me as well so if you're interested in that then have a look at my website sparklingdiva1111.wordpress.com and there's a header and a, uh, on the top of the page uh, courses and you can find it there details might not be there just yet but at least you you can find it there and um uh yeah just keep an eye on it if you want this if it resonates with you if if you feel that uh oh my hair if you resonate with me <laughs> look at that <laughs> if you feel resonance with me and you're interested in this you feel you want the healing then by all means do check it out all right sparkling diva 1111.wordpress.com uh, you can also then uh, send me an email or sign use the contact form i'll stick a contact form on the page uh and and you can use that and then i can send you information when everything is set up if you like right so like i said it's gonna be a month um yeah so it's not like gonna not gonna be 25 dollars or you know it's it's gonna be a bit more than that you know it's a month months of um coaching in a closed facebook group um yeah a month of guidance and support and feedback yep so if that interests you if you feel your inner child can also do with some healing uh, it's going to be uh, soul searching it's also going to be with visualizations likely and uh, because I do have a spiritual energy work approach because that's me that's who I am that's how I work and I found that that works really well too with uh, for people it gives good results right thank you for watching and um, see you next time bye